Okay, uh, let's discuss uh, the concepts of measurement systems. So, sa preliminary coverage, no, i-focus natin yung instrumentation part. No? Uh, I-discuss natin dito yung different types of uh, measuring devices and instruments na ginagamit in today's industry. Ano yung uh, mga categories no? no? Uh, ano pa ba? Yung mga parameters na meron ang isang or karakteristik na meron ang isang measuring instrument or measuring device. No? Ano pa ba? Types of errors, no? O, i-discuss din natin yan dito, no? So, let's first uh, define what is instrumentation. So, instrumentation is basically the study of measuring devices, no? Used to determine the values of the varying quantities, no? Ano ba yung mga, mga nagvavary na quantities like speed, light, current, voltage, resistance, no? Uh, yun, yun yung mga quantities na imi-measure natin, no? Na nagbabago-bago. Often, for the purpose of controlling those quantities within the prescribed limits lang, no? So, of course, lahat naman ng instrument meron niyang minimum at maximum lang, no? Wala naman kayong nakita ang measuring devices na infinity or infinite yung kaya niyang i-measure, no? Wala namang ganun ata akong alam, no? So, lahat ng instrument meron niyang prescribed limits. Okay? So, speaking of measuring uh, instrument or measuring device, no? I-define na rin natin siya, no? So, ito yung device na ginagamit to measure the physical quantity o yung varying quantity na sinabi ko kanina like yung speed, resistance, voltage, current, no, and so on and so forth, no. So, ito yung mga example na basic example na mga naisip ko, no, uh, for measuring devices or measuring instrument like speedometer, ohmmeter, uh, voltmeter, no, used to measure voltage, uh, ammeter and galvanometer, um, um kaya nilang mag-measure ng current. No? Pero main difference between the two is that yung ammeter used to measure small and large current both while yung galvanometer used to measure only the small current. So, hindi niya kaya mag-measure ng large current. Okay? So, of course, marami pa namang measuring instrument and device or measuring devices. No? Uh, but ito lang yung mga basic na mga, mga naisip ko. Okay? So, let's proceed. So, i-discuss natin yung uh, types of instrument no based doon sa kanyang pagkakagawa no or doon sa build. No? So, there are three types. The first type is the mechanical instruments, the second type is the electrical instrument, and the third type is the electronic instrument. So, doon muna tayo sa pinaka-old school na kung saan nagmula yung mga digital na na ginagamit natin na instrument ngayon, no? which is yung mechanical instruments. So mechanical instruments, uh, ito yung mga instrument wherein yung parts no is moving or mechanical no that is of course used to measure a quantity like for example itong weighing scale natin no uh, tingnan niyo sa bahay kung may weighing scale kayo and tingnan niyo yung uh, ibuksan niyo yung weighing scale and of course makikita niyo doon yung mga parts is lahat yon mechanical or moving walang gumagamit doon ng baterya no Ah, uh, ito, uh, vernier caliper, no? Uh, used to measure a dimension or specific length, no? Uh, hindi naman gumagamit ng baterya 'yan. 'Di ba? Lahat 'yan moving, no? Uh, itong air pressure din, no? Uh, hindi naman din gumagamit ng uh, ng baterya 'yan or kuryente, no? Para gumana, no? Lahat 'yan mechanical. Uh, the only uh, disadvantage nitong mga 'to, no, is that pag may nasirang part doon sa sa internal niya, no? Uh, mahirap nang ma-replaces ma, ma, ma because old school na eh. uh, yung mga instruments na ginagamit ngayon is digital na so medyo old school na medyo mahirap na kung baga phase out na yung mga parts na, na ginagamit dito sa mga sa, sa mechanical instruments so uh, in short pag nasira yung yung isang part na yun sira na yung buong mechanical instrument no so Of course mas mas matibay pa to no kung ako tatanungin niyo mas gugustuhin ko pang gumamit ng mga mechanical instruments kumpara mo sa 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 mga electrical at electronic instrument ngayon kasi madaling masira kasi yung mga yung mga yung mga instrument ngayon eh kumpara mo dito kasi talagang tumatagal dun ng years eh so uh, yun yung mechanical instrument na so let's proceed dun sa electrical instruments no in contrary kung yun ay hindi gumagamit ng yung mechanical ay hindi gumagamit ng kuryente no para gumana ito is kailangan uh, gumamit ng kuryente no uh, electrical instrument no these are the instruments that is used for electrical methods for pointer deflection ayan yung meron meron kayong makikitang pointer deflector as the quantity indicator well actually medyo kulang pa nga yung definition nito no pero um, ang definition talaga ng electrical instruments is ito yung type ng instrument wherein kailangan gumamit ng electricity no para gumana 
Okay, so like for example, itong electricity meter natin, paano ba gumagana yan? Sa ba nakikita itong electricity meter, di ba sa bahay, no, pag may pumupuntang uh, uh, tiga meral ko para i-record kung ano na ba yung konsumo ng electricity natin. No? So, yung electricity meter, hindi naman gagana yan kung walang naririd na kuryente dyan sa bahay natin, di ba? So, electrical instrument siya. Ito rin, multimeter, na gumagamit ng baterya no, para makapag-measure ng resistance, voltage, or current. Okay? So let's proceed dun sa pinaka uh, sa pinaka high tech ngayon which is yung mga electronic instrument. So ito naman yung mga instruments were in gumagamit ng mga semiconductor devices like diodes, transistors, no? Uh, ano pa ba? Uh, yun lang ata, no? Uh, to measure a quantity like for example itong AC clamp meter, no? Uh, medyo digital na yan, no? Yung yung loob niya, no, is merong PCB circuit na yan. So, uh, medyo, ano siya, medyo high-tech na siya ngayon, no? maliliit na yung mga parts, no? And of course, itong electronic digital scale. Okay? So, next, discuss naman natin yung types of instrument based doon sa output display natin. Ito, sa, sa tingin ko, mad madali ito. No? Uh, dalawa lang naman ang nakikita natin pagka nakakakita tayo ng, 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 ng measuring device, no? Ano ba yung isa? Yung analog instrument, wherein yung may pointer deflector or may scale kayang nakikita. No? And yung digital, wherein yung merit yung nakikita nyo dun sa output. Okay, so next, uh, discuss natin yung types of instrument based on how it measures a particular quantity. So there are three types, no? indicating instruments, recording instruments, and integrating instruments. So the first type is indicating instrument. No? With the word itself, indicating, ito yung type ng measuring device wherein ini-indicate nya lang yung magnitude ng uh, electrical quantity that is measured at a particular time. Like for example, voltmeter, no? Pag uh, nag-measure tayo ng voltage at lumabas doon 3 volts, 3 volts lang talaga yung uh, na-measure noon at that particular time, no? Uh, ammeter, no? Pag nag-measure tayo ng current, uh, lumabas doon 3 ampere. So 3 ampere lang talaga yung uh, yung uh, yung na-measure niya at that particular time. No? So the second type is the recording instrument no in contrary sa indicating instrument no kung sa indicating is ini-indicate niya lang kung ano yung na-measure niya at that particular time ito naman may continuous track ng record no over a short definite period of time no like for example blood pressure device di ba uh, ilang segundo ba na pag binibipi tayo siguro 30 seconds so doon sa 30 seconds na duration na yon no merong record yung uh, yung uh, yung BP natin no ilan ba yung pulso or yung pulse rate na na-measure niya no and yung ECG machine no for 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 the heart no di ba ang output ng ECG machine is a graph no uh, over a over a definite uh, uh, duration lang no ng record nung heart rate naman na so yun yung recording instrument no meron siyang continuous track or continuous record na mini measure niya okay so last but not the least is integrating instrument no from the word itself integrating ito yung type ng instrument wherein ina-add niya lahat ng nare-record niya over a long period of time no uh, ang naisip ko dito is yung electricity meter or yung ampere hour meter or energy meter sa bahay natin di ba pag uh, may pumupuntang uh, tao na nagdi-disconnect sa atin from Meralco uh, di ba yun yun yung sila yung nagre-read kung uh, um, Ano ba yung uh, konsumo natin sa isang buwan? So, yung electricity meter na yun, it indicates gano ba ka, ilan ba yung nakonsumo nyo sa isang buwan. So, ina-add niya no, over a long period of time uh, yung minimeasure niya. No? Yung uh, water meter din no, sa isang buwan, di ba? Um, yung, yung, yung metro natin ng tubig, nakikita dun uh, ilan ba yung nakonsumo natin na, na tubig doon sa isang buwan na yun, no? Ah, uh, yung odometer, ganun din, no? Ah, uh, ito naman for 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 kilometer range, no? Ilan ba yung natakbo no sa sakyan for a for a long period of time, no? So ini-integrate niya, ina-add niya. Okay, uh, let's discuss instrument parameters. So first is the measurement of uncertainty. So there are two categories of measurement of uncertainty. The first is the accuracy, no? Gaano ba ka-accurate ang isang measuring device? The second is Gano ba ka-precise yung ina-output uh, reading ng isang measuring device? No? So, accuracy is a measure of how close the output reading is to the correct value. No? Gano ba siya kalapit doon sa totoong value? While yung precision is the measure of how close the output readings is to each other. Gano ba 
kalapit yung mga ina-output nung nung uh, nung uh, measuring device na yon sa isa't isa. Okay? So nagbigay ako dito ng, ng ng example no to to differentiate and determine the level of precision and accuracy. So let's imagine yung mga dots na yan is yung mga output readings while yung correct value is yung nandun sa pinakagitna o yung bullseye. So dito, tingnan muna natin sa first circle na to. No? So yung mga output readings dito is magkakalayo sa isa't isa. No? So pwede natin sabihin na itong, uh, itong, uh, itong result na to has a low precision result. Uh, while yung accuracy niya dahil malayo yung mga output reading dun sa pinaka-correct value o dun sa pinaka-gitna, no? pwede natin sabihin na low accuracy din itong result na to. So, low accuracy and low precision itong first uh, output readings natin. So, second output readings, tingnan natin. No? So, magkakalapit sila sa isa't isa, so high precision, pero malayo siya dun sa pinaka-corrected value, so low accuracy. So, ito naman, merong high precision result but low yung accuracy niya kasi malayo doon sa pinakagitna o doon sa correct value. So ito, uh, ito of course uh, malapit siya doon sa correct value no or almost nandoon na nga siya sa pinakagitna eh. And yung mga output readings is magkakalapit sa isa't isa. So ito is merong mataas or high precision and merong mataas na accuracy. Okay? So I hope na intindihan kung ano yung uh, yung uh, difference nung dalawang nung uh, dalawang measurement of uncertainty, yung precision and yung accuracy. Okay? So next, tolerance, no? So tolerance is defined as the total allowable error in an instrument and it is specified by a plus minus. No? Like for example, pag bibili kayo ng 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 resistor, no? Makikita niyo sa isang spec sheet ng isang ng resistor, ah uh, makikita niyo doon yung uh, yung rating nung nung watts rating, pero may nakalagay na plus minus 5% tolerance. So ano ba 'yon, no? So for example, no, uh, i-solve natin yung tolerance nitong uh, ng resistor na to, no? So, a resistor has a 1,000 watts of rating with a plus minus 5% tolerance. So, what is the minimum and maximum power wattage of the resistor? So, gagawin natin dito. So, mag-solve uh, tayo dito. Ano? Uh, pointer. Okay. So, solve natin. No? So, yung 1,000, no, ita times natin dun sa 5% or dun sa 0 0.05. So, equal siya sa 1,000 times 0.05, 50. So, itong 50 na to, itong 50 watts na to, ito yung ipa-plus minus natin doon sa 1,000 watts. So, ang minimum natin is 1,000. Ito yung minimum. Minimum power wattage. 1,000 minus 50 is equals to 1,000 minus 50 is 950 watts. And yung maximum na wattage niya, or yung power wattage is 1,000 plus 50 or 1,050 watts. So, yung tolerance or yung minimum and maximum power wattage is naglalaro from 950 watts to 1,050 watts. So, ganun mag solve ng tolerance. So, binibigyan naman sa problem yan, no? kung ano yung percentage ng tolerance ng isang uh, device. No? Okay? So, I hope na itindihan yung part na yun. No? Medyo madali lang naman siya. No? Medyo straightforward lang yung, uh, yung uh, pagsusolve niya. No? So, next. Range. So, range refers to the minimum and maximum value of an instrument scale. So, like for example, may thermometer tayo that can read from negative 40 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. So, yung range natin is from negative 40 up to 100 degrees Celsius. Yung span naman is ima-minus lang natin yung maximum and minimum value niya. So, in this case, yung thermometer natin has a span of 140 degrees Celsius kasi 100 minus minus 40 is 140 degrees Celsius. So, yun yung span. Now, so, I hope na nag-gets yung, yung difference ng range at ng span. Okay, so uh, let's discuss reproducibility. So, this is the ability of the instrument to produce the same output repeatedly after reading the same inputs, given same yung ambient conditions. So, example, meron tayong measure na 9 volts battery using a voltmeter. No? Does the voltmeter exhibit high or low reproducibility? No? Tingnan natin dito sa 3 triads. You know, big sabihin, tatlong beses pinesure yung 9 volts battery given same room temperature. Sa first reading, ang lumabas is 9.2 volts. The second is 9.1 volt. 
And the third is 8.9 volts. Masasabi ba natin na itong voltmeter na to has a low reproducibility or high reproducibility? Obviously, dahil nagkakaiba-iba yung, 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 uh, yung output reading, pero same lang naman yung room temperature, low reproducibility yung voltmeter. Kasi hindi niya na-maintain yung same reading doon sa trial 1, 9.2. Okay? So, low repro reproducibility itong voltmeter na to. Okay, next, yung linearity no? or yung measurement of proportionality between the input and the output values of an instrument. So, pag binigyan kayo ng, 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 ng values, no? uh, gagamitin nyo itong linear regression formula na y is equals to a plus bx. Okay, ito yung mga formula for y-intercept dun sa a or yung a value and yung slope which is yung b. Ito yung formula. Kung gusto nyo lang naman ng long method, no, ito yung gagamitin nyo. Pero kung hindi nyo gusto yung long method, meron naman nyo sa, sa calculator nyo. Which I think that is a um, nasa stat mode yun. No? Uh, hanapin nyo lang yung stat mode sa, sa calculator and makikita nyo yung, yung formula na A plus BX. So, yun yung gagamitin nyo. No? So, isasabihin naman sa problem yun kung ano yung, uh, yung Y dun at saka kung ano yung X dun. Okay? So, uh, let's proceed. Next, yung uh, tinatawag na sensitivity of the measurement or resolution. So, sensitivity is basically the difference between the output trading divided by the difference between the value of the quantity being measured. Okay, so for example, no, uh, meron platinum resistance thermometer no, uh, were measured at a range of temperatures determine the measurement of sensitivity of this instrument in ohms per degree Celsius. So, um, i-determine natin kung alin ba dyan yung output at alin ba dyan yung minimeasure. So, uh, so, yung output dito, uh, of course, ay yung resistance kasi plat, tinum resistance thermometer. So, ito yung output natin. So, ang minimeasure natin, since this is thermometer, ito yung measure natin. Ito yung temperature sa Ito yung input natin. Okay? So, yung sensitivity is basically output versus input lang. So, ganun lang yung, yung, yung ibig sabihin. So, so, sensitivity. Solve natin. Sensitivity is equals to difference of the output divided by difference of the input. So, delta output so, kuha lang tayo ng dalawang values dyan and then i-minus natin. So, for example, siguro itong uh, two sets of values na doon. Itong nasa gitna. So, output natin is 321 minus 314 divided by 260 minus 230. So, 321, 314, 7, divided by 30. So, ang sensitivity nitong platinum resistance na to is 7 over 30 ohms per degree Celsius or 7 over 30 0.23 0 0.23 ohms per degree Celsius. Okay? So, madali lang. Na? So, alamin nyo lang kung ano ba yung output reading, ano ba yung ina-output nung specific measuring instrument na yun, and yung input or yung mini-measure niya. Okay, so ganun lang siya. Okay, so discuss natin yung zero drift or bias. So, zero drift, basically, it is the effect where the zero reading is modified by change in environment conditions. Like, for example, yung mapapansin nyo minsan pag bumibili kayo ng bathroom scale, no? or yung, yung scale nyo na lang sa bahay, Mapapansin nyo, kahit wala pang nakatayo doon, meron ng reading. No? So, for example, may bathroom scale daw na merong 1 kg reading, even kahit wala pang nakatayo doon. So, ibig sabihin, pag merong 70 kg na tao na, na nag-weigh doon, yung magiging reading niya ay 71 kg. So, yung 1 kg na yun, yun yung tinatawag natin na zero drift. Ibig sabihin, yung zero, zero reading nag-drift by 1 kg. Okay? Of, of course, uh, depende naman yun kung, kung, kung bakit nangyari no? uh, due to the environment condition. Like for example, siguro dahil nasipa ng isang tao yung, 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 uh, yung bathroom scale kaya nag-drift yung uh, or nag-offset nag yung zero reading or halimbawa uminit 
No? So, depende sa environment condition. Okay? Next, yung sensitivity drift naman, yung sensitivity naman ng measurement yung nag-drift, no? given a change in ambient condition. Kung kanina, yung zero drift, yung zero reading ang nag-drift um, given a change in environment condition, ito naman, yung sensitivity naman ng measuring device, yung nag-drift, given a change in ambient condition or environment condition. Okay? So, uh, let's have an example para mas maintindihan niya. So, a spring balance is calibrated in an environment at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius and has the following deflection and load characteristic. Okay? So, ngayon, yung spring balance na yun at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, nilipat siya ngayon sa environment na meron namang 30 degrees Celsius. No? And uh, the following deflection load characteristic is measured. So, determine the zero drift and sensitivity drift per degree Celsius change in ambient temperature. So, isolve muna natin yung zero drift and yung sensitivity drift. Saka natin i-divide doon sa degrees or doon sa per degree Celsius change in ambient temperature. Okay? So, uh, kuha lang ako dito ng pointer para makapagsulat tayo. So, kunin muna natin yung uh, zero drift. Zero drift. Okay. So, zero drift, uh, yung zero reading yung nag-drift. No? Tingnan natin dun sa 20 degrees Celsius. Sa 20 degrees Celsius, wala pa tayong nilalagay na load sa spring balance. Zero lang yung deflection. So, dapat lang naman kasi talaga, di ba? Kasi wala pa tayong nilalagay. Ngayon, nilipat natin yung spring balance sa room temperature. Ay, so hindi pala room temperature. Sa, sa, sa temperature na 30 degrees Celsius. Ngayon, wala pa tayong nilalagay. Meron ng deflection na 5 mm. So, yun. Nakita na natin yung zero drift na 5 mm. Okay? So, yan muna ang uh, gagawin natin. Kukunin muna natin yung zero drift. Okay? Next, kunin natin yung sensitivity drift naman. So, sabi kanina dun sa formula na sensitivity drift, it is the, the ratio of the difference of the output reading divided by dun sa value na minimeasure natin. Okay? So, ano ba ang output natin dito? Yung output natin dito sa 20 degrees Celsius ay uh, kunin natin yung sensitivity dito sa, sa table 1. So, sensitivity dito ay uh, ano ba ang output dito? Uh, I think um, ang output reading ay millimeter o yung deflection ang measure natin ay yung load. So, millimeter per kilogram yung unit natin. So, kunin natin yung uh, kuha tayo ng uh, two sets of values. So, 20 minus 0 divided by 1 minus 0 so equals to 20 millimeter per kilogram yung sensitivity at 20 degrees Celsius so kunin naman natin yung sensitivity dito sensitivity equals 27 minus 5 Pag kunin natin itong itong uh, two sets of values ano? divided by 1 minus 0 or 22 millimeter per kilogram at 30 degrees Celsius. So, yung sensitivity drift is yung drift niya from 20 degrees Celsius doon sa, papunta doon sa 30 degrees Celsius. Nag-drift ba yung sensitivity? Ayan, mapapansin naman natin. Kasi from 20 mm per kilogram na sensitivity at 20 degrees Celsius na ambient temperature, nag-drift siya papunta sa 22 mm per kilogram. So, ang sensitivity natin is ma-minus natin yung 22 22 millimeter per kilogram minus 20 millimeter per kilogram equals to 2 millimeter per kilogram. So, ito yung uh, sensitivity drift natin. Okay? Next, o saka natin kunin ngayon yung per degree Celsius change in ambient temperature. So, madali lang to. Uh, I-minus, uh, or hindi pala i-minus, no? i-divide natin do, doon sa change in ambient temperature. Ano ba yung change or yung delta na ambient temperature. Ambient. Oops. Ambient temperature. So from from 20 naging 30, eh di yung uh, yung change in ambient temperature natin is 10 degrees Celsius. So i-divide natin itong 5 mm by 10 degrees Celsius and itong 2 mm by 10 degrees Celsius. Yun yung sagot natin for this problem. So, 5 divided by 10 is 0.5. So, 
So, 0.5 millimeter per degree Celsius. Yung sagot for zero drift per degree Celsius change in ambient temperature. And for sensitivity drift per degree Celsius change in ambient temperature. So, 2 divided by 10 is 0.2. 0.2 mm per kilogram per degree Celsius. Okay? So, I hope naiintindihan kung paano kumuha ng zero drift and sensitivity drift. Yeah? So, madali lang siya. Tama ba tayo? Check natin. 0.5. Okay, tama naman tayo. And for sensitivity drift, 0.2. Yan. Okay, so next, uh, measurement of errors. So last but not the least sa instrument parameters. So, uh, meron tayong two types of errors. Uh, I'm sure na discuss na rin ata ito sa inyo sa numerical methods or if I'm, if I'm not mistaken sa advanced mathematics. Hindi ko lang sure, no? So, absolute error, it is the absolute difference between the true or exact value and the measured value. While yung relative error is the ratio of the absolute error and the true value. So, pagkuha nyo doon sa absolute error, so true value minus measured value, absolute nyo muna yung value na yun. Uh, and then, i-divide nyo sa true value. So, yun yung relative error na. 